Hello and welcome to another Blender Know How video. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit differently than we normally do. Um, and we're going to talk about an add on. Uh, this might seem a little weird to you, as it does to me. I, I'm not a huge add on person to Blender. I, I really like Blender in its raw form. I don't really like installing a lot of things. But, but I think this is the exception. Um, I have played with this add on and I really like it. And it's called the, um, the Animation Nodes add on. Ultimately what it does is we, we work a lot of times within nodes for shaders and we work a lot of times within nodes for for many other things within Blender. Uh, but the one thing that if we don't have very many very much node support is for animation and you might might think like yeah that makes sense because we just keyframe and, and you're right we do do that. Um, however programs such as Houdini um, that they use in the industry do this and it makes for a very powerful workflow. Uh, you may experience like that in the shading in Blender. It's really nice to be able just to delete a node and it's almost like you undid something that you couldn't have just undone because it was 20 saves later and you just needed to disable something. Or within the modifiers it's much like the same thing when we are modeling something and we just want to get rid of a subdivision or just decrease something a little bit earlier that we now can. Uh, done with all the theoretical talk, let, let's get a little bit into it. Uh, first off, we need to download the thing. So if you are interested in this, uh, keep watching. If not, move on, I guess. But I, I really highly encourage you to check this out. Um, anyway, so this GitHub page will be in the description. You can go ahead and copy and paste it. If not, just uh, search animation nodes into Google and it will pop up pretty easily. Now, if you're using Blender 2.8, which I am, and this tutorial will be geared around, um, then you will not want to just click on download the latest version here. Uh, that's not actually the latest version. I don't know why that says that, but um, it's not. Uh, all you have to do is click up here where it says 11 releases and that might change in the future because I think he's been changing this to keep it updated for 2.8 uh, and then just click on 2.14 test builds or don't, not, don't click on that just click underneath this where it says Windows Linux or I guess Mac OS doesn't have one currently so Windows and Linux go ahead and click on your respective thing and now this is where I got tripped up. I thought this was the download button, but this little green download button is the actual download. So um, make sure you click on that. Wait for it to download. And then uh, open up Blender. Once Blender is open, you can go up here to edit. And this is Blender 2.8, and I'm also using the RC1 edition, which is the release candidate just barely came out this past Thursday been pumped to use it so and then you're just going to click uh, wait if go cancel that uh, click on add-ons and then click install and then you just navigate to uh, wherever it downloaded to so for my instance it'd be in the downloads and then it was this 6.6 uh, I, I downloaded it twice because I downloaded it before but yeah it just uh, click on the zip. You don't have to unzip it. Just double click on that. It'll take a second. Uh, now right here is also another part that you might trip up on. Um, I thought you could just go click on it. However, I found that I always got some weird issues. So uh, just exit out of Blender and then open it back up again. And go click on Preferences animation nodes and click on it. It takes a second. It's not going to crash on you hopefully. And then it works. So hopefully you didn't get any errors throughout that. Uh, if you did, restart Blender. That's at least what I did and it, it worked fine. So, uh, So the power within this is ultimately you can now open up a new window in Blender and uh, click on animation nodes and do anything you want. If you want to animate this cube in a lot of really crazy ways, you, you, you can. You can just start playing around with it and, and creating 
Uh, instances. You can make an object instancer. And then you can, let's do this, output. So you can just add an output in here. And then you can start connecting um, your objects in. Uh, just tell it what object you want, how many instances. And you can already see that it's doing stuff over here. I actually have 10 instances of this cube by just connecting these two things. Um, and I, I think this is where the real power of this comes in, is now later on in my workflow, I can always just come back and, and say, uh, you know what, I, nine was a little excessive, I only needed three. And you can see over here, updated in there. It's really fast. Um, another just tip before uh, before I end it is you could pull open this and you can change some of these things like maybe you don't want this to always execute meaning if I had this checked you can see that this is like spamming numbers here and uh, ultimately that's just that's how fast every I don't know 0 0.1 millisecond it updates However, I think that's a little excessive for our CPU to handle. So you can just turn that off and just change these. And every time you just edit this, then it will update here. And, and it works fine that way. Or every time that you change timeline, it will update. You can see, as I scrub here, this number is fluctuating. Then you don't kill your CPU, especially if you have like thousands and thousands of vertices, faces, and stuff. So um, I'm going to get more... Uh, info on this later. I'll give some more tutorials on how to use this, but this is essentially just a like quick start guide, and I hope that you have found it a little helpful and intrigued by this new way of animating in Blender. And I think this is probably one of the more most useful ways of animating and doing MoGraph inside Blender, much like Cinema 4D or After Effects. I think this is a good way to jump into something like that. And so, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Blender Know How.